Okay. All right. All right. And then, uh, all right. There we go. Now we can synchronize the sound in the video. All right. Thank you for coming, everyone. Um, I'm, as you can see, I've got video here. I'm going to try to record these, but I'm not. Uh, I, if you're hoping that I'll put it up online, I can already tell you that's going to be a very slow process. So you need to be uh, coming to the class. Um, so thank you for uh, bearing with the, the change in format here for the rest of the semester. As I was looking at the schedule between now and the end of the semester, I think we'll probably have 10 more lectures. Um, the rest of the ones will either be um, our, the, the third and final exam of the semester, or there'll be some open days meant to specifically allow you to focus on your, your project before it is due. So um, that's what we have in, in schedule for, for the rest of the semester here. All right. So we're beginning a new topic here today. Uh, the, the topic uh, is integer programming, uh, chapter 7 in your textbook. And what we're talking about when, when it comes to this is now our decision variables uh, have to be integer quantities. So for example, if you're doing um, reservations for hotel rooms, you can't do a half of a hotel room. You either reserve the whole thing or none of the thing. Right? It's got to be an integer quantity. If you're talking about workers uh, at your plant, you can't have two-thirds of a worker. You're either paying them or you're not paying them. Right? So there, there are certain quantities that you, you have to um, set aside that are integer values. Um, and so these are known as not just linear programs, but integer linear programs. If you look at abbreviations you'll have online, you'll probably see an ILP, that integer linear program, as that abbreviation. So um, these usually have to do with some real world quantity that we can't divide. So good sometimes can. Like if we talk about iron ore, we can have two thirds of a pound. Um, amount of distance traveled could be uh, three quarters of a mile or, or, or whatever the case is. But when we're talking about items that, that can't be divided, we're going to have to specify these as integers, not just as a value. Um, so what I wanted to, to do is understand how that might be different. So I'm going to take <coughs> A, a problem um, right here. Scroll this uh, down right here. And we're going to look at the integer version of the, this problem. Yes, David? Could you turn off the front light? Sure. All right, so uh, our problem is going to look very similar. We're going to do maximize. 3x plus 2y uh, subject to uh, 3x plus y is less than or equal to 9, x plus 3y is less than or equal to 7, negative x plus y is greater than or equal to 0, um, and we have our logical constraints of x and y still being non-negative. The new thing that we're going to add here is that x and y are elements of the natural numbers. In other words, they have to be integers. Okay. This is the only new thing that we are adding for this that we haven't seen before. So let's graph this just like what we're used to seeing and, uh, and see what the case may be. So, Let's take this first one, 3x plus y. Uh, so this may be uh, bringing up bad memories. We thought we were all done with doing the graphing solutions. Uh, but I want you to, again, be able to visualize what is different about the integer solution than is different from the continuous solutions that we've used up until now. So 3x plus y. So if y is 0, that would mean x is 3. 
and if x is 0, y would be 9 right here. So we get um, like that, right there. And what side of that line are we going to be on? Where are we going to be in relation to that line? We're going to be below it, right, for this lesson right here. Okay, our next one, x plus 3y is less than 7. So again, if y is 0, then x would have to be 7. And if x is 0, then y would have to be 7 thirds, or 2 and a third. So about right here. And where are we in relationship to that line right there? We're also below this line right here. And then finally, negative x plus y equals 0. That's the same as y equals x. All right. So, that, this line right here. All right, and we are on that side of that line as well. Okay, so where's our feasible region for this problem? Where's the feasible region line? Yes, David. For the y equals x, why are uh -huh. we on the right-hand side of that line, not the left-hand side? Well, uh, because we need to make sure that um, is it above it? Yeah, it's above. Oh, it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I tried answering and I couldn't. So that was it. remember when I was prepping this and looking like that. Let's try it again. I'm sorry? There we go. So if x is 0, y is going to be 1. And now it's Still like the y equals x. And now it's below. There we go. Now it looks like what I wanted it to do. Twice. What a difference an a inequality sign and a constant can, can make. Okay. Let's revisit the question. Where is the feasible region in, in this problem? What's that? In this uh, trapezoid down here in the bottom here, right? So those are all the, the spots that are legal, but I am not going to shade that whole thing because of this constraint right here. This, because of this constraint, that is not a legal solution because neither x nor y are an integer at this spot right here. The only legal solutions are right here. Okay? Um, and I don't know if this is right or not. Let's pretend it is. Looks something like that, where I have put those, those circles on the board. Those are the only legal spots that we could find a solution in. Okay? If we didn't have an integer solution and we plotted our 
objective function, what would be the slope of our objective function? You guys remember how to compute that? So we can set it to any arbitrary value, constant. 3y plus, uh, 3x plus 2y equals some constant. It's going to equal that. And then we can turn this into slope-intercept form. Right? So that would be 2y equals c minus 3x, or y equals c over 2 minus 3 halves x. So the slope of that line is negative 3 halves, negative 3 over 2. Okay. So it would look like a rise of negative 3 and a run of 2. So it would look parallel to that line right there. Our objective function is going to parallel that line. <clears throat> so if I were to sweep this line here now over our solution, this is the place that it would exit right here at this point. So this would be our solution if we didn't care about the zero, I mean the, the integer constraints. So this right here would be our solution. Is that a legal solution, however? Okay. So if we asked a computer to solve this problem, it could quickly identify this as the right solution. Okay. So um, it turns out that to, for the computer to identify the best solution is actually uh, a hard problem to solve. A hard problem for computer scientists to solve. Because we need to keep sweeping this line right here, not until we intersect with our constraints, but until we intersect with one of these possible points here. And it's hard to know when we're going to intersect with one of these integer points here. Okay? Um, and it's so hard that if you give your computer a big enough problem, it might not be able to solve it. It might take you longer than the amount of time the universe has existed to solve that problem. That's what I mean by a hard problem. Okay? So, how do we come up with, with the, the solution then? Any ideas? How we, if it's a hard problem to figure out which one is closest, what would you do? Yeah, dude. I would be satisfied with a good guess. <laughs> You'd be satisfied with a good guess. Well, we can, in this case, we can actually get the right answer. How would we know if it's a good guess, though? How would we know? What should we use as a good guess? If you plug in the value into the maximum equation, Plug what value? Any of the integers that you specify. And probably if you were to take that line that you calculated and keep dragging whatever one it hits first would be your answer. That's what we can do in two dimensions. And we will hit. Do you, do you see which one it's going to hit first? Yeah, two more. This one? No. Three. Oh, it's actually going to hit this one first. Yeah. It's hard to see with this slope of the line, because it's really, really close to these two. Right? That's another reason why we hate the graphical solution, right? It's really hard to see that. Okay, but a computer can't sweep lines on the graph to solve it, right? That's not going to work so well. So one solution that you mentioned, Matt, is we could try all possible solutions. Okay. That's option number one. And for this solution, we can actually, for this problem, it's small enough we can actually do it. I think there's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
there are eight possible solutions. We could try all eight and figure which one is the best. Okay? That doesn't scale very well. Right? You start adding enough possible solutions, you're not going to want to try all possible solutions, right? So what's another solution strategy that we could do? Try a representative sample of solutions. Sure, but how do you know you've picked the good solution yeah. instead? <laughs> Let me make it a little bit simple for you. One solution is what's called the LP relaxation. Have you seen relaxation on your model and wondered what that is? Um, or solve relaxation, I think is what it says on Open Solver. What the LP relaxation says is ignore this constraint. Pretend like it doesn't exist. Okay? So any integer constraint is ignored, and we come up with this as a solution right here. Okay? If we do that, then what we can do um, is we can try um, rounding that solution. Okay? Now that's not perfect. So in this example here, if we try rounding this, this is over two and a half, and it's over one and a half. So if you rounded the LP relaxation, you would get this value right here. Okay? Not a legal solution. We, we can't accept that as a solution. So you might have to do... You, this gets you in the ballpark of a solution, of a solution. And then if you said, well, I'm not going to try to round, I'm going to try to truncate the values so that I stay within that legal region, that gets us this solution here. So we get something approximately, like, let's see what the value of that is. 3 times x, what's that? What's x there? 2 plus 2 times y, which is 1. So we have 6 plus 2, we have 8 there. Okay, but what did we say the optimal solution was going to be if we swept it through? It's this one right here. Let's see what that one is. 3 times x is? 3. Plus 2 times y? 2. 9 plus 0 equals 9. So you can see that this is actually the optimal solution for an integer case. So even if we do the LP relaxation, we're just going to get in that ballpark. We're not necessarily going to get the optimal solution. And if we get kind of really steep angled, you can see that um, the distance between where this is and the first integer value could be far enough that uh, the integer solution and the LP relaxation could be far away from each other. Okay? What this what this means is you want to be careful when you do integer solutions. You need them because your problem requires it. You can't just, like I said, use a half of a person. And so you need an integer solution. Uh, but it's hard, and doing something like a relaxation on our solution does not guarantee that we will get the solution that uh, is most optimal. So we would like to be able to try all possible solutions, but there may be so many possible solutions that you can't. Uh, so if, if any of you had a hard time getting your project for today to run, because it took a really long time, this is why. Your problem is an integer problem. You say that it can be in a congressional district, or it cannot be in a congressional district. It can't be in part of a congressional district and part not the congressional district. And so you put a constraint on some of your variables that they not only had to be integers, they actually had to be 
binary, right? They could only be 0 or 1, a, a subset of, of all possible integers available to you. And so what your computer was trying to do was try all possible solutions, because that's the best thing that it could do. Let's just think about that for, for a second. I'll throw out some um, approximations here. Let's say you had a state that only had five congressional districts. And you had a state that only had 50 counties. Okay? So this is kind of the minimum project that you're allowed to do for the class. Okay? In that case, you part of your thing, you had five congressional districts this way. And you had 50 counties this way, and you made every one of these values in here binary. <clears throat> Which means you had 5 times 50, you had 250 binary values. And to try all possible combinations of zeros and ones for these 250 binary numbers, is 2 to the 250th power, which is gargantuan. It's, it's beyond computable. And so as a result, your computer plays some tricks, and it does things like uh, branch and bound. So it says, oh, I know that if I try this, it's always going to be better than these other solutions. And so I don't have to try those other solutions anymore. So it can wipe out some trials. But it can't, in general, wipe out enough of those solutions that this goes from an intractable number to a tractable number. It just goes from a, a, you know, a, a, you know, a very massive number to a slightly massive number. Okay? Um, and so in your open solver, you can tell it that it has tried hard enough. Okay, and there are two ways that you can go about doing that. Um, if I open up um, Excel here. If you, we go to our can't see that, can you? If I go to the model tab here and I click on this, this down button right here and I go down to the options instead of just normally clicking on the model, you can see that it brings up this dialog box here. And this box right here says maximum solution time. So you could put in, say, five minutes or 300 seconds, and it will compute for, it do its best for, for five minutes, and after five minutes is done, it'll tell you, this is the best solution I've found so far. Okay? And then, it, but it will quit after those five minutes uh, and be done. The other way that you can do that is you can say, 